Hey, good morning. I hope everybody's doing well today. I figured I would take the opportunity um, this morning and talk about um, witnessing to somebody, how to witness to somebody. Um, you know, uh, in the beginning, when um, I first started to learn about the Lord, I remember um, walking into the 7-Eleven in the morning and going, you know what? I'm going to find a reason to glorify God. Somehow or another, I'm going to come up with a way to talk about God in front of this, in this store with all these people in there. Now, whether it was going to be, um, thank God it's Friday or I'm alive, you know, every, any day above dirt's better than a day below dirt, you know, thank God I'm here, you know, et cetera. Um, one morning I was making coffee and, um, I will say, I, at first I was very blessed. You know, it's nice when you come up to somebody and you ask them, do they know about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? And they tell you, yes, they do. You know, um, I came across a bunch of people who did know Jesus, you know, and they were actually, um, you know, impressed and blown away that I actually walked up to a complete stranger and started to talk about our only hope that was on this earth. Then, you know, once you go uphill, you got to go down. So um, I came across a lot of people I wish I never spoke to at all. You know, um, some people got a lot of problems, you know, and you don't know what's going on in somebody else's head or um, what they're dealing with. You don't know if they're just fighting with their with their spouse at home or if their mother just died. Uh, you know, we get offended when somebody doesn't say thank you for holding the door for them or, uh, you know, anybody that doesn't just show any common courtesy, you know, and that's because um, a lot of times when something happens, we may get so deep into our own thought that we. We can't hear what's going on out here in this world. Uh, sometimes I've driven for a long time and I can't even tell you how I got where I was. I was so caught up in thought that I wasn't paying attention truly to what I was doing or where I was going. When you witness to somebody out here today, you know, it's hard to get up the courage to go walk. You know, and it kind of reminded me of that old girlfriend that I was nervous about going to take on a date. You know, it took everything to, to drive over there, and then it took a lot more guts to get out of the car and even more guts to walk up on the front porch. And you know what? You got to just push the doorbell, you know, and after you ring the doorbell, it's too late. Somebody's coming to the door. Oh, well, we'll see what happens, right? I remember as a kid, I used to knock on people's door and run. You know, they would answer the door and look out there, and them kids was laughing and giggling when we were running down the street. It was We were just crazy kids, you know, but when you witness to somebody, you tell them about hope. Not only do you tell them about hope, you set them free. You set them free right then and there. You break every chain that they have. Jesus Christ put an end to the law. Jesus Christ put an end to the law of sin and death. We are now blessed above all spiritual blessings and seated in heavenly places with him already. A lot of times I would come across a Jehovah's Witness out here uh, in my neighborhood. Jehovah's Witnesses... Um, I guess before this pandemic, they were they were pushing really hard, you know, and um, first and foremost, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Scripture flat out says that Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. But Jehovah's Witness says, no, Jesus isn't God. He's God's son. You know, and we can end that conversation with these guys. You know, and send them on their way, you know, and I can quote Revelation 1, 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, uh, the beginning and the end. And the end. Um, Jesus Christ, uh, all things were created by him and for him and without him, there was nothing that was made. So when you tell these people about our blessed hope, chances are they're not going to know what you're talking about. And if you can find somebody that's willing to actually give you a minute of their time to listen to you. You need to make sure that those few words that you have in that limit, limited amount of time are very valuable. Yes, Jesus loves you. 99.9% .9 of Christianity knows that Jesus loves them. If that's all you know is that Jesus loves you, you're not going to be very good at witnessing to anybody. You're not going to be a very good representative of the Lord. We are ambassadors. If your eternity is based on what you believe. Don't you think that you should know that Jesus Christ died on that cross, was buried and rose from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures? If you don't have any scripture, you don't have any power. If you don't have scripture, you got what's known as an opinion. And opinions are like, well, you know, everybody's got one.
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life that no man shall come to the Father but through me. This is 100% truth. In order to correctly follow Jesus Christ today, we follow Paul. Religion doesn't know this. The mystery that was hidden in Christ has been keep, kept secret since the beginning of the world. Religion still hasn't called on to it. We are flat out declaring what they are messing up on. COVID-19 shut down every single church out here. We have been declaring the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, hardcore, and they still can't get it. Why? Because they're worried about their parking lot service. They're worried about what they can do in the flesh. They're worried about the stupid sign out front that says, we got empty seats in our church. You know, you got the opportunity to put the gospel on the sign so that people can see it or on a bumper sticker or a pamphlet or anywhere. And they're more concerned with promoting themselves and what they're going to do in this life than they are about promoting eternity. Jesus Christ has prepared a way for you, me and you to be with him for eternity in the third heaven. All that's required for me and you to do is believe. Believe that he died for our sins, was buried and rose from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. If you believe that, then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. This is Ephesians 1.13. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. That's Ephesians 4.30. You are quickened together with God, never to be separated again. You know, now I don't have all the answers. I'm not claiming to have all the answers. I'm simply sharing the information with you that I have learned. I'm excited to know who my Lord and Savior is and what he's done for me. I'm so excited about it that I have to go tell somebody else about it. I have to make this stupid video where I'm sitting here talking to this stupid phone like an idiot looking, sitting here looking at it by myself. You know, I remember the pastor saying, if, um, if you can hold a conversation with a wall, you know, you can, you can witness to people. If you can talk to a brick wall and make sense, you can get through to somebody out here because that's what it's like. It's like talking to a brick wall. All we need to do is knock Satan off of these people for one second. That way that glorious light of Christ can shine on them and in their hearts. And once that light turns on, buddy, that's a wrap for Satan. Anytime you want the light, the darkness to disappear, turn on the light. It's the fastest way to get rid of the dark is to come into the light. When you come into the light, you're protected. Each of us are covered by God's blood. Without being covered by God's blood, we will burn up at the judgment seat of Christ. Each and every single one of us will stand at the judgment seat of Christ and give an account. And whatever isn't Jesus Christ will surely burn. In order for you to fill yourself with Jesus Christ, you must let the word of God dwell in your heart richly. You do that by studying Romans through Philemon. This is why we are pushing Romans through Philemon the way that we are. Time is running out. It's important. It's very important for you to have Jesus Christ inside of you. God doesn't just want you to be saved. It's his plan for his son to live inside of you. And through faith, we have access to the mind of Christ, to the unsearchable riches. Eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor entered the hearts of men, the things that God has for those who love him. When you start planting those seeds of hope, power, and promise into people and you give them comfort and assurance you know um that's a whole lot better than going out here and telling somebody if you don't repent for your sins you're going to burn in hell you know and when you do that ears automatically close and you don't want the ears uh, to close you want hearts to open you know when you can come across somebody and really say hey this guy is down to earth he's as real as it gets and you know what you can say, you know what, maybe he's like our Apostle Paul. We follow men who are like our Apostle Paul. We mark them. And we follow and we mark and avoid people who aren't like our Apostle Paul. It's that simple. It's, it's pretty easy. I hope you guys are well. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for your time. Um, the Lord's blessed me with another day. I have no other choice than to glorify him in his name. I'll keep you guys in my prayer.